it into today's conversation. Uh, please um, let me know if you can see my screen. I think that's that's a popular language we all use whenever we're sharing screen. Let me know if you can see my screen, please. Um, yes, I can see your screen. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Thank you so much. All right, so rightfully, as she has said earlier on, uh, my name is Samuel Enriemi, and thank you so much. I really want to appreciate the fact that you were able to pronounce the name very well. A lot of people just say Enriemi, you just, just say it anyhow, but yeah, thank you so much for pronouncing it very well, accurately, it's Enriemi. Um, yeah, as she has rightfully said, uh, I've been in the industry for a while, and um, so I will skip you guys the whole, the whole paparazzi and all of that. So um, currently, I I lead the design efforts at um, Roadhouse. Roadhouse is an um, Australian-based company that um, does a lot of you know, um, software design and development. And also we have our own products that we manage in-house too. So um, that being said, I will just, um, you know, just walk um, straight into to this topic. Uh, please, along the line, if anybody, you know, I'm sharing my screen, so I can't necessarily see what is going on on, um, I can't necessarily see what is going on here on on meet interface so if anybody has anything to say along the line i don't know if that is allowed i'm just saying uh please um let me know um okay so yeah today we'll be talking mainly about how to build a portfolio a strong portfolio actually not just a portfolio you know there's different between just normal portfolio and a strong portfolio why balancing um demanding clients work so before we even go into it i i want you to just know that clients work and building your portfolio at the same time are, are too difficult work so nothing nothing can ever change that those things are too difficult work but what we want to just look at today is basically um, figure out how we can navigate our way around some of those things. Um, so the dilemma, right? Um, balancing the client's work and also building our portfolio. Um, as you rightfully know, portfolio is very, very important for everything we do as a designer. It is a it is an avenue for us to showcase what we are capable of. It is an avenue for us to show a part of us that is not even related to design. It is an avenue for us to show everything we represent to our clients. And also potential clients also, you know, they want to understand your ability and your and what you're capable of before giving you any project or any form of employment. So your portfolio is where those things, is where they get to understand those things, what you are capable of. They want to know your story. They want to know, you know, a couple of things. So um, we will dive deep into um, everything. So still, you know, talking about the dilemma, like I said earlier on, So, uh, and as, as designers, right, when clients give us work and all of that, so they have their own um, visions, they have their own deadline, project requirements, and all of those, you know, um, out of lack of what jargons that, that they give us to turn into beautiful piece. And meeting all of those things, and the same time balancing your um, product, or sorry, balancing your portfolio, it, it could really be a balancing a, a lot a lot like a balancing act because balancing those two things can be really really um taxing and also um the stake right um not compromising on quality or missing deadline when you when it comes to client work 
and building your own portfolio is very, very important. So all of these things, we will dive deep into it. I just want to just lay you know, a little bit of um, um, foundation before we move into it um, finally. So throughout the course, we will, I'm sorry, <laughs> throughout this session, we will cover a couple of things. Um, and um, hopefully you will get to see one or two things that will be useful to you. So now going into it, um, the key points, the key things, balancing client projects with portfolio building efforts. One of the major thing that we often as designers don't do is having a proper time management. A proper time management could be as simple as you just setting uh, a certain hours of your day for your client's work and certain hours of your day for your own projects, right? It, it doesn't have to be a complex, a complex system that requires a lot of work even before you get to the major work itself. Um, an example, we, we have um, time um, time block. Um, time block. I, I, I wouldn't go ahead to just read everything we have on the screen because I'm still going to share the the um, the documents with you guys. So of course, at any time you can go there and um, and check it out. Of course, I will check it. We I'll, I'll I'll share with the management, and the management will definitely know how to um, share it to everybody. So time block, like I said earlier on, is setting aside a specific hour, either in a week, in a day, or month, that you could actually work on your client's work and also your own work. Um, in, in building portfolio, right, this next um, point, it, it can be subjective sometimes. In building portfolio and working on client work, um, most of the times, maybe not all the time, client work always, you know, come first. And when I say client work come first, especially when you're just starting out, um, there are there are a couple of things that you want to use to elevate your portfolio. And one of those things, as we're rightfully discussing right now, is your client's work. So if you don't have a client's work in the first place, there will be none to put in the portfolio. So client's work most of the time. It comes first, you prioritize clients, um, deadline, you know, always. And at the same time, you want to leave space for your portfolio work. But remember that client work also always, you know, come first when it comes to, to that. And also one of the major way that we can actually balance this whole thing, it could be as simple as using Notion, if not all, I think almost everybody knows how to use Notion, right? and it is totally free. So it could be as simple as using Notion to track your your own work and also your portfolio building um, process. Uh, I'll try as much as possible to be, you know, fast. And if I'm too fast, please, um, you can uh, call my attention to it. I'm sure that the management will will let me know. So, um. Let me come back to the interface and make sure that I'm still I'm still here. All right, cool. All right, so one of the um, key point again is you know avoid overworking. You know, client work sometimes it can be really really draining. Not not just as freelance alone. Even if you have like a full time job, sometimes it can be really really draining. So make sure that you don't. Um, overwork yourself to certain extent that you don't have um, time for every other thing again. All of these things are, you know, built up to where we're going to. So, and also um, having a solid portfolio does not require you to work on everything in the world. Uh, I see a lot of, especially new designers now, they always follow trend. I, I, I remember, was it 2020 or 2021, when AI and, I'm sorry, when virtual reality was was raining, a lot of people, when you get to their, to their um, profile, you just see um, AR designer, 
this this designer and i'm like bro you don't have to hop on every single trend so focus on completing you know piece and um, few portfolio pieces that are high quality um most times i recommend your you know for portfolio um, portfolio works so that you will not over warm overwhelm yourself or overwork yourself with multiple projects um today and and that is something a lot of designers um you know face um today when you design your portfolio you just be like ah homo is not fine enough it's not this enough so most of the time we design for designers like ourselves that are not the one hiring us rather than designing for for um for clients right so you know focus on doing quality things quality piece for your portfolio rather than doing you know multiple things and the, the 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 annoying thing about doing multiple things at once is that at the end of the day there is high probability that you will not even end up finishing any of them right okay so while still working on your portfolio or and at the same time doing client work it is very very important to set realistic expectations right um setting actually for building your portfolio so I, I will give you a little bit of backstory um so i'm recent um I, I i i recently worked on my portfolio is currently under development right and um one of the major thing that happened a friend of mine came around one day a lot of you guys will probably know him um he came around one day and i was telling him uh, everything I want to put in the portfolio, the D's, da da da. And and yeah, before I even say that, everything I'm going to talk about today does not only affect junior designers. There are some of the senior designers that these things also affect, right? So I was talking to him that, oh, I want to put this, I want to put that, yada yada yada. And he listened, those things were were calm, was good. And and he, the, the next question he asked me is that. Samuel, you know, if you want to do this thing, you are going to take ages before you finish this presentation. If you, uh, sorry, before you finish your, your portfolio, it's not like you don't have a full-time job. You have a full-time job. You have your own business and all of that. And you still want to do this thing. You're going to overwork yourself. And I looked at it. He was actually kind of right that, you know, having too many things, having too many goals or, um, saying i want to do this i want to do this not setting expected um um sorry setting realistic expectations sometimes it can actually affect both your portfolio and your client's work because at the end of the day you make sure you you end up you know being burnt out and and at the end of the day most times that's what happens to most designers they end up neglecting their portfolio and the next time they will think about it again maybe it's, it's going to be like the next two three months they have to excuse me they have to start from from beginning again so make sure that you set realistic goals um so one of the major points that we also want to cover is you know leveraging clients work for your portfolio so right from onset i've been saying that your client work, let me just read directly. Your client work is a good mind. Like it is the the it is what gives your portfolio cred its credibility. And most times, client work, not even just most times, client work is an avenue for you to show that you just don't know these things on paper. You can actually solve real life problem. It is an avenue for you to show what you are capable of doing. It is an avenue for you to show how you do your things, right? So client work gives you that um, that that part of of building your your portfolio, and also when you're doing client work, most of the times you want to ask for permission, ex especially for projects that are not necessarily live yet or projects that are not in the public. Um, public yet you want to ask for permission and mind you there are a couple of projects you will want to do i mean this one will definitely speak to majorly um um beginners um designers that are still beginner right there are a couple of projects that you will want to do that 
it is not necessarily about the money that you want to get from it. Sometimes it's because, oh, that project caught your attention, the briefing and everything caught your attention, and you feel like it's going to be a great addition to your portfolio. So sometimes you can just, um, you know, sacrifice some, some like money and, and all of that. And all you just want that the, the, the clients just give you approval to just share this thing. I mean, I'm not saying you should go and do free work. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying that there are times that, you know, prioritizing building your portfolio compared to, um, you know, gaining money for every single project. Cause when you build your portfolio, obviously, uh, most of the times it, it, it gives you uh, advantage. Um, yeah. So moving on, um, part of leveraging clients work to build your portfolio is that while you're working on these things, you want to also document your, your process, right? Those are the things that will help you elevate your portfolio while you're working on your portfolio. You want to show um, the process, the starting point, the midpoint, and the, uh, the, the final design. You want to also showcase how you solve a particular problem, how the, the kind of solution you, you, you give to your, to your clients. So um, documenting the process while you're working on your client's work um, to build your portfolio is very, very, um, important and also you want to highlight achievements and, and metrics um i mean just as i, I rightfully um wrote down here that results speaks volume when you work on a client's project right on your portfolio you just don't want to show the ui alone and and that is it some of the things that gives your portfolio credibility is writing the results that your solution was able to to provide uh for example if you are working on maybe like a redesign and all of that you can say something like oh after redesign like i wrote here the product the client saw 13 percent increase in conversion and and all of that if it is a new project you can have something like maybe uh after the first two months of launch we have um 70 percent retainer um, um, sorry, user retainer after two months of, 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 um, going live, we have, um, maybe we have 10,000 downloads and, and all of that. We have, you know, 20,000 mo uh, monthly visits, average monthly visits to our website and all of those things, those metrics, we actually help you to, to write your story very well in your in your um, portfolio. And don't forget that we as human, generally how our brain works is when we see results, when we see results of, of something that that is really positive, we, we really get attracted to, to those things. Um, okay. And also, yes, you, you also want to share on your portfolio um the struggles you went through while you are doing those projects like any form of constraints you you met on the way and all of that so you want to also um talk about it all right so the next point will be um creating or creating a well-rounded um portfolio you know like i said earlier on that your Client work is very, very important in creating a, 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 a good portfolio. Um, but at the same time, a good portfolio shows a, a range number of things, right? That you are capable of, right? And when I say range number of things, I'm not saying that in your portfolio, you should go and be saying you are a product designer, you are a video editor, you are this, this, and that's not what I'm saying. Um, saying it shows a range of of what you're capable of doing. For example, there are just designers that are just focused on designing landing pages alone. But if you do more than just that, you want your portfolio to be able to um, say those things. So I wrote here that while your client's work will dominate your portfolio, it is important to show 
what you're capable of doing like the if you're capable of doing i mean any type of design it is good for you to show some of those things maybe for example if as a designer most of the jobs you've been getting has been either mobile app has always been mobile app and you know within yourself that of course mobile app is not the only area that you 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 know so you want to also do some sort of passion project but we will get there to be able to show that you are capable of doing those things right and also you want to create for relevance be strategic in 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 what you include in your in your portfolio and your portfolio should always tell a story of your of your growth and when i say be strategic is unless we want to deceive ourselves there are some works that you will do today that you are extremely proud of and there are some that you do that you're not necessarily proud of it probably because of because the the client influenced it too much they didn't allow you to put out your creativity or it could be any anything so some of those projects if possible you may not need to include them in your in your portfolio if you are not necessarily proud of it because if you're not proud of something you you, you did um there's high probability that other people will not be proud of it too. So you want to be strategic with everything you have in your portfolio. It doesn't necessarily have to be um bonuche. Sorry for those that don't understand your do You don't have to like include every single project that you've ever worked on on your product, on your project, on your portfolio. So you also want to choose projects that reflect your your growth. So um, you know. The, the projects you want to choose, they should be projects that has that, that shows your progression in skills, that shows your growth, that, ev that, that highlights your evolution as, as a designer, right? And also, like I mentioned earlier on, you want to include some passion projects. Uh, sometimes it's to fill gap and sometimes it's to just um, demonstrate a particular area that people you have not necessarily done for clients but you know that you have the capa the capacity to do those things i also have a yeah, mix of work you want to include uh um personal work spec work if applicable you know um and this shows um your diversity it shows that regardless of what we throw at you as a designer you you got us covered um for example if i want to hire a a designer today um and maybe the first project i want the person to work on is a mobile app there's high probability that i'm not going to hire someone that the only thing they have on their portfolio is landing pages right so yeah that that uh, also is there and also you want to show there are times that you're working on some clients projects that is going to take probably years a year two years i don't know if you guys have ever worked on any projects like that um, but there are there are times that things like that happen so sometimes you want to include those things into your pro, um, into your your portfolio as working work in progress i'm very sure that you you guys must have seen some portfolio where you 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 will see the the thumbnail for each of those um case studies but they are not clickable yet you will probably see something like coming soon some of those projects there are still something that they are still working on why some of them of course they've worked on it but they've not been able they've not had time to write the case studies yet and and all of that so um yes so that is that then um we move to strategies for continuous improvements um i'm trying to check okay check time so strategies for continuous in improvements you want to constantly evolve your portfolio um that and your portfolio yeah i think i need to really emphasize on this your portfolio is not only about your case studies your portfolio 
is a personal brand. It's about you as a person, not just case study. If I come into your portfolio, I want to be able to know maybe not everything, but things about you. Um, that's why you will go to some people's um, portfolio and you will see the songs I'm listening to, my playlist, and, and all of those things. You know, little, little things like that are very, very, very important for, for um, your portfolio. You also want to, um, if, you, if, for example, you are taking a course you are, or you're learning a, a new skill, before you finish it, it is even possible that you also include those things into your in your portfolio because they help you, um, they they help you reach for uh, further. If, in the sense that, if for example you use your portfolio to apply for a job and all of that, the as simple as seeing something like, oh, I'm currently learning, uh, maybe three D for example, it could be the major reason why some employer we we hire you because they will be like oh even if that is not part of our requirement now he's learning 3d it might be handy in the future right so and some of those things also it gives you a lot more um advantage when showing your portfolio um other thing again is you want to learn to iterate your portfolio and this this is also very important the the portfolio you used four years ago may not be relevant anymore because the landscape of work is changing the landscape of everything is changing there are new designers coming up now that if you do not um you know keep evolving yourself everybody will leave you behind if you do not keep evolving yourself your 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 portfolio there are times that you wrote you know certain case studies you can rewrite them again with you know better better words better visuals and and all of those things so it is very very important to constantly evolve our portfolio and also one um other thing that is very important again is you want to use client feedback also to grow your work as a designer and uh, now when i say client feedback of course you can't necessarily um take at every single advice from clients you have to also uh be able to prove yourself as a professional when you're talking to a client so but you know having client feedback is very very important and being able to improve your work with that feedback don't be I, I am a bad designer, so I don't take feedback from nobody. Don't don't be like that. So um, client feedback is very very important. And most of the times, when you you get this feedback and you are able to um, actualize it in the design, and of course it improve the design, it will be easier for you to then ask for reviews from your from your um, clients and. You can ask this to your portfolio as a test, uh, testimonial. This definitely adds, you know, credibility. It adds credibility in the sense that, of course, I know that a lot of people that just form, um, that just form some sort of testimonial and just put it on their portfolio. But it adds credibility because this is a real client, and asking for portfolio, most of the times you just have the permission to share, probably their picture or their name in your in your portfolio that they were the one that gave this this um um review for you of course since their project is is not a dummy project and and it's life so that would definitely give your your portfolio a lot more credibility um also you want to analyze industry um trends I i'll try to be fast now because i'm looking at the time um, you want to analyze industry trends. You want to stay informed about um, the trend going on in the industry. But of course, you don't have to like blindly follow every single thing, right? So staying um, above all of these things, like um, you know, coping with trends, doing um, following some certain trend, you can as well as you know uh, uh, you can as well incorporate some of those things into your 
design and also why following trend you also want to put your own little spin into it so that you can personalize whatever you are doing and add your own creativity into it um i also have here that build and maintain personal projects this is very important in as much as um in as much as clients work are very very important it is also important for us to have at least one personal project in our, in our portfolio most of the times your personal projects right it, it turns out to be to be sometimes your best work most of the times they, they, they turn out to be your to be your best work so in as much as you want to improve your portfolio with clients work it is also very very important excuse me to have personal projects in your in your portfolio this this will help you a lot it is going to show what you're capable of doing and your and how creative you are so um overcoming the pressure of client work right why also building, building your portfolio and i want you guys to really take note of this because a lot of designer fall victim of some of these points that i will be i'll be i'll be sharing now you you need to understand that your clients have urgent deadline and expectation which definitely sometimes it, it can it can put a strain on you on your ability to do certain things but something that is very very important is that you want to communicate you want to communicate and set realistic expectations for your for your clients i mean i i, I made a couple of these um mistakes too when when i was starting out right but it didn't really affect me then because i i won't say it didn't affect me but it didn't really have a huge um effect on me because i mean at the time there were no a lot of designers like we have right now so sometimes sometimes we we get away with some of those things but not setting expectation from the onset it, it is going to give you unnecessary pressure while you're working on on client work and when when you're pressured most of the times you don't even for you you don't even remember that you have a portfolio that you're working on so you want to be able to communicate effectively and be able to set realistic expectation from the onset and um, another thing is you need to learn to say no there are certain projects that that are not for you it could probably because it could be because of the deadline it could be because of your current situation it could be because of anything there are there are certain projects that are not just right for you for you to just be able to maintain your mental health it's just better for you to to say to say no i'll, I'll give a, a pure example so um about four or five months i think four months was it i think maybe four or three months ago someone reached out to me we've worked together before very very calm guy we've worked together before and and everything was was calm so um he spoke to me about the project and i was very very interested because it, it's um it's a it's a feed that i don't really have i've not really ha i don't really have a life project for that particular feed right and he reached out to me so i was i was really pumped to to work on it but after the conversation, I, I sat back and reflect everything going on. I, I had recently moved to a new place. I was expecting a baby at the time. I have a full-time job and I have a couple of things that I'm working on for myself also, trying to set up a company. You know, all of those, we, we, we couple of friends, all of those things add up together and I'm like, we like actually have time to do these things so i just had to call the person back and just explain the situation that oh i won't be available for for this project so you need to learn how to say no now the advantage of that is that if you did not say no 
uh, imagine in my own situation now with everything I just explained now, how on net will I be able to do that project that I will not disappoint that person? I will definitely disappoint that person. And once you start disappointing your, your clients, there is high probability that they will not come back. So um, learning how to say no is very, very important. And also it helps you to protect time. It helps you to gather you know, time to work on your portfolio because there are some clients that if you work with them, you are definitely going to feel overwhelmed. So um, um, that is it. So in conclusion, right, um, I'm trying to round up now. In conclusion, um, building a strong portfolio while managing clients' work, uh, it, it requires a lot of time and dedication. And also you need to be very, very strategic in your planning. Um, you are leveraging clients' projects. You, you need to leverage clients' projects, right? But also um, make space for personal work that you can show in your, in your portfolio also to give you to give potential clients the range of skills that that you have and also you want to continuously refine your portfolio and don't ever stop learning um, all of these things are part of you growing as a designer now actionable steps please and please everything i said now a it comes down to you prioritizing your time and set clear boundaries and create your work thoughtfully. So um, these are the actionable tests, uh, sorry, actions rather, or steps that you want to be able to do after this, this session or when you want to work on your portfolio and, and all of that. You also need to start using client feedback and metrics to demonstrate your impact, right? And also you need to keep evolving your portfolio, um, even if it is just one project at a time. Um, thank you so much for listening to 